Hey guys, Skellington80 here. So today we are back for day 16 of 25 Days of Monsters. If you're joining us now and haven't watched, if this is, I mean, I'm sorry. What I mean to say, if this is your first time joining us, welcome to the series. Please watch the other videos, they're great, or at least I think they are. And um, But if you're joining us from day 15 and have been watching all the way through, Welcome back. Uh, I am looking forward to spending the rest of this spooky month with you and hope you enjoy the stories. So today, we bring you the story of The Invisible Man from, well, The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells in 1897. And here we go, here's the illustration. I've said it before and I've say it, I'll say it again. I adore Tim Seibert's illustrations in this book. And I think he did a really awesome job, but here we go. <coughs> All right, category, science experiment, base of operations, South of England, when, the 1890s, most dastardly deeds, murder, vandalism, kicking a dog. Yes, this guy had problems. Weakness, footprints in winter, and his powers are invisibility and extraordinary irascibility. I don't know what that means. I will look it up later and put it in the description. And the fear factor is three, even though that's kind of relative. Before there was an invisible man, there was a visible man. His name was Griffin. He was a bright young college student. Specializing in medicine and physics, especially optics, the study of light. His great discovery was a method for making living tissue invisible. At first it was just a theory, and like any good scientist, Griffin knew his theory had to be tested. And so he swiped his neighbor's white cat. I guess we can add stealing a cat to most dastardly deeds. <laughs> this is how you make a cat invisible. Everyone pay attention, this is important information. First you sedate the cat, or it won't sit, sit still. Then you give it injections to decolorize its red blood, and after that you place the cat between two vibrating dynamos that change the cat's body so it can no longer reflect light. See? Very simple. I'm sure all of you watching at home can follow along if you want to do this yourself. I'm kind of kidding. This is impossible to do. Okay. Griffin powered up the dynamos, and the white cat became transparent as air, except for its claws and the section of its eyes called the tapidum lucidum. I don't know if I pronounced that right. The part that makes cats' eyes shine at night. I understand the part that makes their eyes reflective, but I don't really understand the claws. Like, what is special about the claws? Why did those remain visible as well? Eh, whatever. These stories very rarely make sense. This was all well and good until the cat woke up, justifiably annoyed, loudly, loudly meowing, and was, and what was worse, hard to catch. You see, I think the cat wouldn't really mind because cats don't really give two craps about much of anything, so... Oh, hi Coco. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the this particular cat was particularly high strung. I don't know. And also he probably ticked off his neighbor by, or, or really freaked out his neighbor by making their cat disappear. And it never says if he returned the cat. It just says that he let it out of a window. That he shooed it out of a window. And his landlord accused him of torturing cats in his room and tried to evict him. Since the cat experiment was a success, Griffin was ready to try the procedure on himself and enjoy all the fantastic advantages an invisible man would have in the world. He fired up the dynamos, took off his clothes, and soon he was visible no more. After setting fire to his apartment building to cover his tracks, yeah, Griffin definitely had problems. He began to roam the streets of London, prepared for a life of ease. But, as they typically go... As they typically do in these stories, things did not go as planned. First of all, London in January is no place to walk around naked, invisible, or not. London is also crowded, and people kept stepping on toes they could not see. Invisible Griffin 
I thought he could steal whatever he needed, but he soon learned that he couldn't carry anything away without being noticed. Imagine food or money floating away in midair, gripped in invisible hands. And here's a quote from the book. What a helpless absurd abs absurdity an invisible man was, in a cold and dirty climate and in and a crowded civilized city. So, so Griffin found himself living like an animal on the streets of London, scavenging for scraps of food and sleeping in corners. He finally jumped an old proprietor of a costume shop, tied him up, and stole a wig and mask, along with some clothes. He left the old man bound and gagged, and I suppose he untied himself, Griffin guessed later. But he didn't give it much thought. There were more imp important people to worry about, like Griffin. By now, poor Griffin had grown disillusioned with invisibility. Even with his mask and wig, he could hardly live a normal life. Normal people don't walk around in masks. Well, unless they're cultists, but that's beside the point. Finally, he decided to wind a bandage around his head, like a burn victim. He still looked unusual, but with gloves on and a hat on, he didn't look like a monster. In this disguise, Griffin traveled south south to the sleepy little town of Iping, Ipping, it's spelled I-P-I-N-G, I don't know, and hold up, hold himself up in a local inn, vowing to make himself visible again and end this hellish existence. The formula for revisibility at last eluded him. Furthermore, as you may have noticed, Griffin could be unpleasant. He soon alienated the proprietress of the inn as well as the locals. Also, he had a bad habit of leaving the door to his room open, and passerby who stuck their heads in risk of a conk from a floating chair swung by invisible arms. Or perhaps they'd see a most strange thing, what seemed as a handless ar what seemed like a handless arm waving, the invisible man without his gloves. After experiment after experiment failed, Griffin took to throwing temper tantrums, smashing his test tubes, and cursing all through the night. He was a most difficult tenant and also never paid his bills. When a nearby house was burglarized, the town townsfolk naturally suspected the most suspicious character in town, and Griffin stripped naked to avoid the police, but Griffin being Griffin, he didn't escape until after he beat up the constable and anyone else he could reach, and on the way out he kicked a dog. I mean, I get being an unpleasant... I get that he was an unpleasant and short fused person but sheesh that's just evil he definitely deserved what was coming to him okay so he was now back to square one naked and penniless he passed the time smiting and overthrowing for the mere satisfaction of hurting and broke a lot of windows he beat an unfortunate man named wicksteed to death with a piece of fence and started to begin a reign of terror and killed anyone who disobeyed him in the coastal town of Port Burdock, Griffin declared himself the sovereign ruler and called himself Invisible Man the First. He also announced the man who would be executed first, Dr. Kemp, an old friend from medical school who had happened to have a practice in town. Kemp had refused to assist Griffin in his murderous plans, so he had to pay. This is day one of year one of the new epoch, the epoch of the Invisible Man. And so Kemp ran away. And Griffin pursued him invisibly until the two ran into a crowd. The crowd couldn't see Griffin, but they didn't need to. They had him surrounded. He was one man against a multitude, and the multitude beat him to death. As his lifeless body lay in the street, first his nerves, then the glassy bones and intricate arteries, then the flesh and skin became visible. Hmm. Turns out the cure to his invisibility was death. Who knew? Uh, okay. And now we've reached the part of the video that's close to the end, which is beyond the book, in case you haven't watched before. H.G. Wells' is Other Monsters. Wells being Wells, he couldn't stop writing books full of monsters. Hey, I don't blame him. Monsters are fun to write about. The Time Machine in 1895. A nameless time traveler visits the year AD 800 and... 800... 802,701 and encounters two species descended from humanity. The Eloi, a short, weak people who are friendly but dumb as cattle, and the Morlocks, monstrous albino cannibals who can see in the dark. The Morlocks live beneath the Earth's surface and only come up into the air on moonless nights to seize and feast upon the gentle Eloi. 
The Island of Dr. Moreau, 1896. A mad scientist on a remote island in the Pacific creates human-like hybrids by surgically combining animals. There's a hyena swine, a rhinoceros horse, a bear fox, a goat ape, a leopard man, and all sorts of other terrible mixtures. They can walk and speak like humans, but their animal natures are always threatening to come out, and the question is whether these beast folk can make it to the end of the novel without eating flesh. Spoiler, they can't. The War of the Worlds, 1898. Unspeakably nasty creatures have come from Mars to conquer Earth. They have disgusting lipless mouths that drool constantly, gorgon groups of tentacles, and all that is bad enough, but they also have a ghastly, terrible heat ray that roasts everyone in their path. And I'm guessing by that, they don't mean mercilessly insult. I'm leaning more towards burn into a pile of ashes roast. Wells' plan for peace. Wells was a peace activist, and he developed an unusual plan to end war, which he outlined in two books, Floor Games, 9-11, and Little Wars, 1913. The idea was to get children interested in realistic war games with tin soldiers, and by playing these floor games... You set the soldiers up on the floor, kids would learn the futility of war, and as adults would have no desire to engage in the body sport. Unfortunately for Wells, the year after Little Wars came out, the world erupted into World War I, the largest war history had yet seen. The Ring of Gyges 2,500 years ago, the Greek philosopher Plato wrote in The Republic a story that inspired the Invisible Man. In the story, a shepherd named Gyges discovers a magic ring that can make him invisible and finds himself able to do anything he wants. He can kill or release from prison whom he would, and in all respects be like a god amongst men. So he kills the king and makes himself ruler of the land. Plato's argument is that no man can be imagined to be of such an iron nature that he would stand fast in justice when he is tempted by a power like invisibility. And with that, we have reached the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed today's story, and I hope you will be back tomorrow for day 17. If you are joining us just now, I hope you liked today's video and will be interested in continuing watching the series. And if you have been watching the series up to this point, I thank you for coming back and hope you will be back for day 17. With that being said, like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz, and I will see you next time. Bye!